Hi, you're listening to The Sociology Show, a podcast about absolutely anything to do with the wonderful world of sociology. Whether you're a teacher, a lecturer, a student, or just taking a passing interest, this podcast will look at a range of issues from social class, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, religion, crime, education, and anything else that sociology has to offer. My name is Matthew Wilkin, and each episode I will speak to someone working in the field of sociology and let them explain all about their own interests, their research, and their experiences. So, put your earphones in, turn the volume up, and let's be sociology geeks together, eh? Hello and welcome to The Sociology Show. The Sociology Show podcast is brought to you in association with tutor to you the exam performance specialist for A-level and GCSE sociology students and teachers. And so you can visit their website, which is tutortoyou.net forward slash sociology. And there you can pick up revision guides, revision videos, flashcards, and everything else that you need for your A-level or GCSE sociology studies. And so on to this episode, at the time of recording, it's the 11th of January, 2021. And England is in lockdown 3.0, with all schools and colleges closed and lessons being taught online. And so what I thought I'd do is going to talk to four sociology students to discuss how they're finding it, how they're finding the lockdown, and also how they're finding online lessons and coping with that. So we are joined by Rosie, Juno, Bailey and Kitty. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Thanks for, thanks for joining me. I'm going to start with you, Rosie, because uh, Rosie, at the current time, you do have COVID. Is that right? Uh, yeah, well, I had it last week, but I've just recently been out of the isolation. And that was on Saturday I got out. Oh, no, it was Sunday. Sunday or Saturday. Yeah. Yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's good. And how are you feeling in general? Any, any more symptoms at all? Uh, it was all right. It wasn't too bad. I didn't get it badly, luckily. It was just... I experienced a lot of tiredness so a lot like working at school was really hard uh, with concentrating and stuff like the online lessons I struggled with because I just couldn't concentrate because I was so tired kind of continual fatigue yeah um but it was all right I didn't really affect me that much so I'm glad and none of my family got it either which is really lucky yeah both odd and lucky <laughs> yeah <laughs> And um, is anyone else, uh, of, the, of the other three of you, have any of you had the virus or think you might have had it? No. Uh, no, probably not. I certainly like seasonal colds, but without any of the symptoms of the actual virus. Yeah, yeah same. Um, no, I haven't. I'm, I don't really get ill. So <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> yeah, nothing's getting through to you, Kitty. It's great. So the reason, <laughs> main reason I wanted to talk to you was um, about how you're finding it. So Rosie, Juno and Bailey, just for context, are first years doing a two-year A-level course. And Kitty is a one-year AS sociology student. So she's really been effective because, uh, let's, let's start with you, Kitty. Your exams have been cancelled this year. So what's your initial reaction to that? Um, I think it, it definitely is, brings a sense of relief which I think a lot of students feel as well um, because the way in which exams are carried out is like very stressful um, to students lives and I know like I struggle with time management and a lot of people do as well who actually have a lot of potential and exams just aren't the best like method I think but yeah hopefully everything I think last year everything turned out okay with the teacher assessed grades after some like issues because obviously mm. it was the, the students weren't happy with the grades but I think this year it will be better hopefully. Yeah we've certainly got longer to to kind of rectify that and try and sort it out but it's interesting your first reaction for exams being cancelled is relief. Yeah I think I don't know it, it, like, as I said it's a very like strange way that they do them and people who like suffer from dyslexia and stuff like that it's really not the best way of like assessing people and putting like it kind of puts people in a box I feel like yeah you do wonder if this might have a knock-on effect of changing exams for the future as well because I totally agree with you that mm. often how a student performs in the exam is not a reflection of their ability but do, do you at all feel a little bit lost because you knew what you were working towards you knew you were working towards an exam in June and all of a sudden that's gone I wondered how that's affecting your motivation for for studying and learning at the moment yeah I think 
I definitely sh- struggle with motivation. I think a lot of people do because it's like there's no set goal. There's no direct goal. Whereas before the pressure would be on um, for a particular date. Now it's just almost like, I don't know, it's a weird, to, weird way to put it, but like pay as you go kind of thing. Yeah. Um, like you're, you're just assessed on the go kind of. Yeah, I can, I can imagine that. I, I did wonder if there'd be a slight dip, you know, keeping the motivation levels up of students who were due to have exams this year. And for the, for the rest of you, Rosie, Juno, Bailey, you wouldn't be doing exams till summer 2022, which we assume at this moment will go ahead as normal. And um, how are you finding your, your motivation levels? Can I start with you, Bailey? How are you finding motivation for working from home at the moment? I'll be honest with you, um, very little. Mm. Uh, to be honest with you, I mean, for me personally, motivation, it, it doesn't come from the usual source. It's more to do with like places or buildings. So at home, I associate with the home, relaxing, doing, you know, what I want to do. No work, no, no, no stressfulness, just that. And it's like with, you know, the gym, that's where I work out. Education is for the college. So when I go there, I do that. I'm focused, you know, all these different buildings are meant for those things. So I feel like with this whole lockdown, it just, we lose a part of, uh, not our humanity, but yeah, we lose a part of it because our buildings are what really make us human and not animals. And I feel like that really badly affects my motivation because I don't like doing work at home. I just don't enjoy it at all. It doesn't make sense to me. I, I totally agree with that. It's that kind of mentality, isn't it? I re- you know, when I was a student myself, I never worked at home. I used to go to the library. Exactly. Uh, no, it got I'll be honest with you, I find it really difficult to work at home. I really do not enjoy it. Even now, I'm struggling with work to mm-hmm. put it out. So, yeah, I mean, that's my, that's my opinion on it. Uh, definitely college, you know, is a hundred uh, times better. So Haven't... I just feel like we all, you know, we associate our feelings with certain buildings, with doing things, and you're focused because you're there. Makes perfect sense. What, what about yourself, Juno? How are you finding working at home rather than inside the college environment? Um, I think at first, my expectation of how it was going to be was that I wasn't, like Bailey said, that I wasn't going to be able to concentrate because I always associated college with like working in the school library and, you know, like going to lessons. And I was hoping to basically do my homework in school as well. But um, now that we've been forced to work from home, for myself it's actually been it's worked out quite well I mean it is easier to get distracted and like sometimes you know my family will come in or whatever like whilst I'm doing a lesson but I mean in general I think I can take work at like a better pace for myself and without this like quite long commute to school I've got more time for homework and I don't know it's kind of like actually calmed down my schedule a bit that's which is nice. Yeah, um, that, that, that's yeah. interesting, isn't it? Those people that have a commute, um, without the commute at either end of your day, you've actually got that time to enter <laughs> back into the lesson. I've got about got two extra hours a day, but it's taking an hour to get in and an hour to get back. Yeah. Um, which, it was nice, though, because it was sort of like leaving the house and doing exercise, and now it's sort of like actually like the motivation to get into clothes and like <laughs> leave the house at some point is kind of down. Like, I've certainly had lessons where like I've just like been in pajamas or just like comfortable or whatever and like I guess there's less motivation to get on with the rest of like the things which you would normally be doing but in terms of school I I think I'm I might like my motivation's still there the exams are probably still going to happen uh, we've still got exams at the end of this year kind of like to see where we're at so it's going all right Good. And Rosie, can I bring you in? Would you rather be working in college or are you preferring being at home? I'm, I would definitely rather be in college. Like, I feel like my way of learning is definitely more, um, I don't know, I prefer interacting with people in real life, I guess. Like, I'm more of a vocal person, but um, I feel like on the calls, I can't really like ask the questions I want to ask. I feel like when I'm in the sociology lessons, I interact a lot more than I do online because I just feel like um typing in things for me just doesn't it doesn't have the same kind of effect I think I learn more and and I'm more interested when I'm in the actual lesson but Mm -hmm. saying that I have a lot more I do have a lot more time like because my I walk to school and it takes me about 50 minutes so that's quite nice having a lot more time but again 
I literally sit at a computer all day, mm-hmm. which which just makes me not concentrate at all. I feel like the commute kind of gives you a break. So sometimes I go into college, come back, do a bit of work, and maybe go back in. Like it gives you a break. Whereas now I just sit and I look at the computer all day and there's just no break, just work really. Yeah, I can understand that. It's that kind of natural break between them. I mean, I, I walk into work, so it's kind of 15 minutes just to listen to the radio or a podcast or something. And then when I walk away from work, it's half an hour to kind of detach away from work. And, and like Bailey said, I always associate home as being home. It's where you don't want to work. It's kind of a relaxing place, or it should be anyway. And um, could I ask you in general, and you, you can all jump in on this, obviously teachers are left in a little bit of a place where they're not quite sure how to deliver lessons, whether it should be the full lesson live or whether there should be a, a, a lesson that you download and do in your own time or a combination of both. And um, from your own viewpoint, what, what works best? If I go back around again, Kitty, what works best for you learning from home, do you think? Um, I think it depends on what kind of subject it is. But I think with stuff like sociology, when work is just set and you can kind of get on with it in your own time uh, and like subjects like that, like English and things like that, it's okay to just set the work. But like, for example, in my Spanish lessons, um, it's a lot of obviously speaking and stuff like that. So it is more effective sometimes to have online lessons rather than work being set. But yeah. Do you, do you like the routine of the lessons being on as they normally would in college or would you prefer to kind of just do them in your own time? Uh, I think it's good to have a set time sometimes because as we've been saying, uh, it's hard to find motivation to even like get dressed sometimes. <laughs> or I also think because of the nature of the online lessons and people have like long gaps and they'll have to wait people have to wait all day just to get that work set. Yeah. Whereas if it was set earlier in the day, it might be more effective, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that that makes sense. And Bailey, can I come back to you? You, you, You've obviously said you're struggling at home. What works best for you? What are the best way that the lessons are delivered from your point of view? Uh, I'll be honest with you. It's probably half and half. I like half online, first of all, just to bring us into the topic and then half offline for work and then we send it in. Yeah just to feel like we're at least part of a lesson, but at the same time, we're doing something by ourselves and becoming more independent despite the problems around it. Yeah, because if you're in an actual lesson anyway, you wouldn't just be listening to a teacher for an hour and a half. Exactly, yeah. That's why I prefer it half and half. Yeah. It just feels feels like the closest thing you can get to a classroom without it actually being a classroom. Yes. (laughs) Unfortunately. Yeah, I agree with that. And what about yourself, Juno? What's working for you? Well, all three of my subjects actually do it differently, which has been quite interesting okay. to see what I prefer. Um, sociology, we do, well, yeah, like we do a bit of a lesson and then we do work. Um, for my history, we just <laughs> we just do an entire hour and a half long call, mm. which is quite, I mean, it's quite a lot of time sitting at a desk, kind of staring at a computer. But I also understand that the way my history lesson is taught is a lot more sort of... Um, I guess like teacher taking you through a PowerPoint or teacher taking you through that and then like after lessons kind of for homework you solidify it and for politics which surprisingly has been my favorite way of doing it um we have 45 minutes before the lesson where we prepare stuff for the lesson and then 45 minutes of like um a video call where we then like discuss I guess what we've been preparing or like paragraphs we've written previously yeah I think that works for the subject though I think for me all of the subjects have actually like I mean figured out a way that works really well I was just going to ask you do you know I mean do you find like if you had all of your lessons in full would that feel like too much as Rosie said a bit like sitting in front you feel like you're sat in front of your laptop the entire day yes definitely um I think it's good that especially considering that sometimes the work that's set even in lessons when they give you a set time to do it you can do it a bit quicker so if if you're just being like you've got your zoom call or your team's call and then afterwards you can complete the work in however much time it takes you Mm. so you can take more time if you want you can do it much quicker and i think that works and what about yourself rosie what's what's working for you Um, i'm liking how we do the sociology lessons i think that really works for me because i really don't enjoy sitting at a computer for hours on end i just lose concentration completely 
all my lessons are kind of like that. Uh, in English, we do a lot of um, what they call breakout rooms. Yeah. But they're not necessarily breakout rooms. We do just pick people who we want to work with. Um, we get to choose kind of what we want to do. Like if it's an extract, we can choose which one. It's quite uh, flexible. I just prefer doing them half and half because it, as Bailey said, it's more of a lesson environment. It's yeah. not just staring at a screen for an hour or ju- it's not just independent work either. Yeah, I can imagine for some students, they have four lessons in a day where the teacher's just talking. I mean, that would be difficult for anyone to, to remain focused. And maybe I could ask you a general question, all, all, all chip in if you like. What are the major challenges you found? Obviously, we've only been doing back online for about a week and a half so far, and we could be doing this for at least six weeks, if not longer. What, Bailey's already mentioned the environment. Are there any other major concerns any of you have about the, the online way of teaching? Um, I don't think you can get as much help. Mm. Like if you are stuck with something, it's not like you can just go to your teacher and ask. I know you can, I know you can text your teachers, but it's kind of like, and you probably can call them as well, but it's not as easy just asking something in a lesson. Do you know what I mean? Because you can't get the full answer. I know it sounds a bit, not that big of a problem because we can obviously interact. But for me, interacting in an actual classroom helps me understand something a lot more yeah. than it does online. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, when you're working in a lesson, you get an instant response from your teacher, whereas now you might, might be waiting a while for the message to come back before you can carry on with the work. Yeah. I was just going to say, I find that, especially with sociology, where you kind of do like your homework to prepare you for the topic. And then you come into class and you like discuss. And that was always my favourite part. Like, I was so excited when I like started school and realised that our lessons were basically like debates between the students. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was really good to get to hear like, everyone else's opinions. And now like in most lessons, you kind of, you just like type into a box a really, really short version of what you're going to say, just like a yes or a no. And I think it's a shame that it's a lot harder to just elaborate and sort of have that conversation in real time between like members of the class because that was always my like favorite bit so I feel like we don't get the same like level of discussion out of an online lesson I feel like not comparable yeah me me too I mean I think sociology perhaps loses that more than other subjects that kind of natural discussion debate and so on um yeah even you know like you said students can either type ideas down or even if you ask students to flick their mic on and so on it's just not the same let's be honest yeah, I exactly agree. I mean, I do politics and it's just, I mean, it is proper dull. Typing, <laughs> <laughs> proper dull. And the worst thing is they usually move on before you finish. Yeah. Yeah. You have to delete the whole thing. And you just I've sat, done that like twice. Yeah, you've exactly. A really, a really long paragraph. Oh, someone's and made an argument and you've just got a killer blow coming in. <laughs> oh. You just don't have the time. Yeah, oh, it is pretty devastating, and it's just it's a, probably a bigger another problem is enjoyment. You just don't get the same enjoyment, and that kind of intrinsically goes with motivation. I yeah. find, you yeah. know, being in the classroom, it's so much. You know, the discussion, as Juno said, it's so much more real, so much more. You know, the passion in the room when you're having a debate, it's a lot more there. It feels a lot better. Mm. What has worked for some of my teachers is because I know at the moment in sociology, kind of typing and like so for my history and politics my teachers will kind of like say you know that they'll ask a question and then they'll like just kind of pick a random person to turn on their mic and answer it which in a way isn't always perfect because that person might have absolutely no answer or just really not want to speak but I think the teacher with like a little hand and you can click on the hand and it's like you're putting your hand up and then they just pick from that list and then someone turns on their mic and they can actually like elaborate on what they're trying to say instead of just typing like a one sentence answer so where where do you stand on the uh, mics on mics off cameras on cameras off Uh, in most lessons none no one has their mic or camera on Mm. um i know some of my teachers like especially my english teacher I think she really doesn't like it. And I feel really bad with teachers at the moment because it must be really hard just speaking to a screen with no one replying to you. You're speaking to nothing and then you just have to wait and see if someone's going to type something. (laughs) Exactly. It's just a dead silence. It's a dead bit where it's like, is anyone actually typing anything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And that's probably why, you know, to go back to what you said, 
Bailey and Juno about the teachers moving on too quickly. I think sometimes we sit and pause waiting for messages and if we don't see them, we're like, right, we better move on. But we have no Yeah, idea. no, I totally understand. Yeah, there might be some of you still still typing. <laughs> uh, I mean, the thing what I really like is I, I think the students, it's all right to have the camera off, but I really enjoy, or it's a lot better at least to have the teacher to have their camera on. Yeah. Yeah, my history teacher, like, yeah. he showed us his little, like, TARDIS he had in his room and stuff. That's <laughs> awesome. It kind of, it makes you feel more, like, connected to the teacher, but at the same time, I wouldn't particularly want to have my camera on, especially. All yeah, I, what I think is it's the teachers should have their cameras on, but students, they don't need yeah. to, unless they want it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's just a personal preference, but also because sometimes, I, I think having yourself muted and then unmuting to talk also makes sense because... I mean, like, certainly if I had my camera and mic on, you'd see, like, my random family members coming in, a cat and all of that sort of stuff. And, like, there would just be too much interference. But I think there should always be, like, the option to turn your mic on and speak. Yeah, it it gives it a little bit more human feel. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's strange, isn't it? Because it's also an insight into a teacher's private life as well, which, you know, how much... I mean, a teacher might not necessarily want to share that, to be honest. I understand if they don't, but... It's just nice to feel a bit like more like personal because I think especially in secondary school, I know this is slightly off topic, but you call teachers by their like second name no. and, or like sir or miss or whatever. And it's like, it's like they don't ever really talk about anything to do in their like actual life. And they're just sort of, they're just there to teach you things. They're just a function of like school. And then at, at what I've been enjoying at A level is, you know, like, you feel like your teachers are people, you know, you feel like they, they can like give you anecdotes, which might help with the lesson or just like amusing. And you call them by their first name, which is quite nice. And like, they're just uh, the same with like online learning. It can, it can give you more of like an insight into like your teachers as a person. Yeah. It, it feels like the, the biggest thing we're missing then is kind of the, the personal touches, the social interaction, the communication. We're, we're humans, right? That's what we need. I don't yeah. think we're ever going to get that back with this lockdown. There's no, you know, this is something we're just going to have to deal with. Mm. You know, with the human interaction, I mean, there's no other way around it, is there, really? No, no. It's, just, think- it's an unfortunate case that can't be changed, but we can try and mitigate it. Yeah, I think we all appreciate that it, it needs to happen, even if we don't necessarily like it. And at, at least this time, there's light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccine coming in. I think that is a lovely moment to, to start to draw towards a close. And there is light at the end of the tunnel this time, Bailey. Um, exactly. At least next year, at least for me, it's going to be a normal... <laughs> I'll finally be able to experience college as it should be. It should be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, um, just being allowed in, like, the canteen and groups of people and stuff. Going like. out with your buddies. Yeah. Well, let's leave on that final positive note, then, that even though there are some good things and some bad things, there is certainly a light at the end of the tunnel. So thank you all very much for joining me for this podcast. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Bye now. See you later. Bye. The Sociology Show podcast relies on the kind contributions of sponsorship and donations. If you enjoy the show, then you can help with the hosting costs by donating as little as £5 on the GoFundMe page. Simply visit uk.gofundme.com and search for The Sociology Show. If you can donate, then you will be sent a Sociology Show pen as a small thank you for your continued support of the show.